I'm joined now by Aspen Pharmacare CEO Stephen Saad. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. So talk to us. Those Johnson & Johnson vaccines that you filled and finished at your factory, have they left the factory yet? They are, they are in the vacutainer, so that means they've been packed and ready to leave um, and waiting for the freight plane. So, yes, we know it's uh, finally, as you know, Sally, we, we had to change API sources midway, but finally there are products that are made in Africa and being sold in Africa. So a really proud moment for, for all of us and a, a tribute to the team who worked particularly hard to get this over the line. How many doses are waiting to go? I think it's between 1.4 and 1.5 million doses. Um, remember that we had those, we've had doses there since the end of April. So very sadly, um, particularly given when this latest wave came, it would have been, um, although a very positive day today, I mean, it would have been all the better if we could have released those ones as, uh, in April. But of course, there was a problem with the drug substance out of the US. As you mentioned, this, this is a new drug substance out of Europe. Um, and, there's a, and so there's a, there's a bit of a share between the rest of Africa, Europe and ourselves on, uh, on this vaccine. So very pleased to have been a part of this together with J&J. &J. All right, just you're going to have to explain this slowly and bit by bit. I'm going to pepper you with questions because um, <laughs> mid-June came the blow uh, that my understanding was all your batches had to be destroyed due to the Baltimore USA factory ingredient mix-up because they were providing the base ingredients. You then moved really quickly at Aspen to move into production with fresh batches. That was almost immediate, so that would have been sort of later in June. So I'm trying to work out what's been happening since the end of June um, up to nearly August, why it's taken so long. There's, there's clearly something that's been happening, so just explain it to us. So between, I mean, to manufacture from start to finish takes a, a lot more than a month. Um, just the release times in the, uh, just to release these batches can take a couple of weeks. So you can sit and wait in the fridge for a couple of weeks while you do tests. So just from getting new ingredients and getting it across, uh, starting the manufacturing process, um, you know, this isn't, this is a, a pretty complex and complicated process. You're dealing with biological products here. So, uh, you know, a pretty speedy turnaround to be able to get these new products in. And bear in mind that there's, you know, the drug substance came out of Europe and it was, it's not been plentiful initially. So uh, I must say the, the, the rate at which we're getting drug substance is increasing now. And drug substance is that which goes into the vaccine. But uh, I think, uh, all the supply chains were, had relied very heavily on the American supply, um, and so that was a massive blow for, for globally. You know, tens of millions of vaccines actually were destroyed uh, and because they might potentially have been contaminated. All right, and that's what happened uh, late in April, and we were waiting and waiting for that decision. So in other words, am I correct if I summarize it this way, that sort of after uh, that disappointment mid-June, you then started sourcing new base substance, and that came from Europe, at which point you then started the process of filling and finishing to the point where we are today, where those 1.4 to 1.5 million doses are all packed and ready to be pushed onto an aeroplane plane am i correct and they're leaving from pe airport yes yes and they go to midrand so yes so that is the that is the process and uh, very pleased uh, to this is a historic moment i think for for the continent really historic moment for us and uh, really pleased to be in this position at last it's mm. an incredibly stressful yes. position to have been in but uh, happy to deliver vaccines finally all right so this is actually the first filled and finished COVID-19 vaccine, filled and finished in Africa. Am I correct? Correct. Correct. That, first, that, at first on the continent. That is, that is a wonderful achievement. When is it getting on the plane? I'm just, there have been so many moments where there have been unexpected delays. What time does the flight leave? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 11 o'clock tonight uh, or early tomorrow morning, but it will be, it will be in circulation. This one, uh, this one will be in circulation. All right. And then it goes uh, to Midran. And then will it go to Biovac in Bloemfontein to be assessed for a week or two? 
No, 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 no. It's it's had all its clearances and it's had all assessments, so it would go. It would only go for transport and distribution. All right. So it's going straight uh, after it lands uh, um, uh, tonight. It can then, from tomorrow, start being distributed out to the various vaccination sites. Am I right? I'm, I'm not an expert on the distribution chain beyond our facility, but there's nothing to start. I can't see why it would take more than a couple of days. All right, fantastic. Talk to us about your production capacity. Um, and where are these vaccines just for South Africa? There's 1.4 to 1.5 million doses, or are they for other parts of Africa as well? So the president mentioned in his speech last night that, you know, there's a period between now and September where we're getting the... Um, uh, the drug substance from Europe and you know as a, in a partnership uh, uh, we would be sharing some drug substance with with Europe so we would be supplying product to Europe as well as to the African Union and to South Africa so this that that 1.5 million represents South Africa's share but come October the idea is that all Aspen manufacture will, will serve primarily the continent um, and, you know, if you have a look at vaccine distribution, I mean, there have been billions of doses out there and the pharmaceutical company have done an incredible job in developing vaccines in record time. However, we've got to be candid about one thing. The distribution of those vaccines has been so unequal across the world and Africa has been really left behind. Um, so it's very important to have this capacity. And when you talk about our capacity, you know, we can make 20, 25 million a month doses. So it's 300 million a year. And we have now increased that capacity uh, by January. So within the next four or five months or so, we'll be up to about 450 million doses. And our ambition is with the next couple of years to get you over a billion. So we're in a situation of having one African, one dose of vaccines. I think it's very important for, we can never be left behind again as a continent. Our commitment is to, to, to really build our capacities for Africa and then also to build capacities within Africa. I don't think we can ever again rely on the world to be exclusive suppliers into Africa and not have capacity. So the first, um, the first doses are on a plane around 11 o'clock tonight and from there they're likely to be distributed. So that's to one and a half million South Africans, because of course it's a single dose, which is fantastic, and it's going to really help in rural areas uh, to give just one dose. Um, when is the next batch coming? So I think the batches follow pretty regularly, um, but the, the really big supplies I think are expected to come towards the end of the, uh, the middle, second half of August. Um, I don't want to get too technical about increases in batch size, etc., but uh, I think we're going to get some fairly large quantities in the second second part of August as well, hmm. um, and and that will really help boost uh, you know boost us just before the September where where the age group has been dropped you know to to 18 I think I heard last night. So that is it's a, yeah. It's important volumes. Yeah, that's where, and that's the majority of our population, or a lot of our, uh, we have a young population. So it is really a, a first. It's the first filled and finished COVID-19 vaccines uh, from Africa. Your contract, though, is just to fill and finish. Uh, you're still reliant on the base ingredient coming from Europe at this point. What needs to happen in order for your factory to be able to make the base ingredients as well? I think there's two parts to this. The first is to get a license, you know, which is something we are talking about, which gives you complete ownership of the product. So if you look at most of our pharmaceutical products and most people with pharmaceutical products, they import or they buy drug substance from somebody else and they do full finish. And the advantage of that is that you determine, you release your product, you determine who gets supply of your product, and so if you want to say, I want to give 100% to Africa or to South Africa, you have complete control over that process. Um, I think we've built up enough expertise and enough confidence that we could manage that license well, and, and we are comfortable that we can, and that's something that we are pursuing, is to have our own license, to have our own vaccine, particularly for Africa. So that is the next phase that Aspen would like to, to uh, progress. The drug substance is what goes into the vaccine. 
One can either buy that or one could develop and create that capability yourselves. It is our intention to build up that capability within Aspen. It does require some, some work and quite a bit of thought because what happens in a world after COVID, if there's no COVID, you know, you don't want to be left with a, with a white elephant. That said, there are many vaccines that come with this platform, including potentially promising HIV vaccines. So we're looking very closely at that, but, so, uh, but we had to get our priorities right. First was to make sure we got product to the continent and to our country. Mm. So that's what we have got through this. That was priority one. Our next priority would be to try and get a license. So we are in full control of that process. And the third is to build drug substance. Would take at least a couple of years to get to that capability. But I think we should also acknowledge uh, that Johnson & Johnson picked Aspen in Africa. Mm. Um, they were the only country, company that picked an, an, an African company. And we really, we, we're so glad to have repaid them because we've repaid them by becoming the leading supplier globally. Mm. And having become that supplier and got that attention means that we are getting onto, you know, WTO, WHO, major, major webinars in which we are pushing the case for Africa and the inequalities that we currently have within them to make sure that we actually start sourcing from within our own continent. Yeah. And to that end, Africa has been very united, Sally. Um, and, you know, they've got an ability to shape markets. You can decide who you want to buy from. And that can certainly help, uh, it can certainly help uh, uh, with, with trying to, to get some of the long-term objectives that we really need to achieve as a continent. Yeah. So Johnson & Johnson was the first to sort of put faith in Aspen. Uh, but, of course, we've also heard in the last week uh, the, the very welcome news uh, that Pfizer, with Bi Pfizer-BioNTech, um, has now got a contract with BioVac, a similar contract to yours, to fill and finish uh, the Pfizer jabs. Uh, that's going to happen in Cape Town probably end of the year, early next year. I'm wondering whether, do you see that as competition or a welcome ally on the continent in vaccine production? I think we've, you can only look at this. The more people that have capacities and the more capability, this is not a competition one versus another. This is about trying to help humanity and to try and access it. You know, it's, it's, and to access vaccines is critical. And so I'm very, very pleased for the people at BioVac. I think it's well-deserved. I also think that we've got to look beyond South Africa in terms of capacitating the continent. And these are things that we talk about as Aspen. You know, we've got facilities in Dar es Salaam, Nairobi, Accra, and we are looking beyond that to say, look, we've got all of these vaccines but what happens if they go away? You know, but if, if we have another pandemic, how do we manage it? So we're trying to look and understand we've got a very big, one of the largest players in anesthetics globally, and they go into a similar type of facility. So maybe there's something we can keep factories warm with in between with our anesthetics. But um, some pretty, we're having some, uh, some pretty detailed discussions with, uh, with many of the our African partners. But it's, uh, it's, it's important that we work together. So very happy to have more skills, more capacity. And when we build infrastructure, it's not infrastructure. We've also got to focus very heavily on human capital. We've got to make sure the universities produce people that have done courses that, that do this. Otherwise, we're going to be continually left behind. And to think that you can solve an African problem by capacitating India, I think, has been proven, has yeah. been proven that it can't work. And that's where people like UNICEF and Gabby can certainly assist, assist the African companies. I have to ask, um, I know that Aspen Pharmacare, of course, is headquartered in Umflanga, although, of course, your factory is in the Eastern Cape. But KwaZulu-Natal certainly got the worst of the infrastructure destruction. Uh, I think it was the Sipla uh, pharmaceutical warehouse that was destroyed. Um, it has been a very shaking time for all of us to see the level of destruction and the level of unrest. Uh, after the week that we saw two weeks ago, um, you are, of course, a major player in South Africa, business-wise, and on the continent. Is your faith in South Africa as an investment destination shaken? I think it was, I mean, living here and hearing what was going on around the neighborhood and, and literally not, it's a, it's a very unsettling experience. No one should have to go through something. It's that sort of element of lawlessness in that country, but particularly my heart really goes out to, and I know what it's like to build a business from zero 
and to be absolutely passionate about that business and to watch people that had businesses, employed lots of people, and watch it go out in smoke or being dismantled piece by piece is heart-wrenching. What, what, does it shake your confidence in South Africa? No. I think what, what really helped build it for all of us was the incredible that we, we, we got the polarization became those that respect the rule of law and those that don't respect the rule of law. So I think we learned a lot as a country and clearly we cannot have these rifts and divides uh, within government, etc. We need to, we, government needs to talk with one voice. It, it's got to look after its people, but the people are shown they can look after themselves and will. And that's something that we can be really proud about as South Africans. We stand together, we make a plan, and we always make it work in the end. It should just be nice if we didn't take the difficult route every single time and need to go to the brink. But uh, certainly it hasn't shaken us, as you can hear from what I've told you earlier. Our intention is to invest further, to go from, you know, for 300 million doses to well over a billion doses. And that's all going to be in our South African facilities. But we really need to pull together, invest together, and we need to be given the confidence to continue to be able to do this. And that means fixing your electricity, fixing your structure, and knowing that there is law and order in the country that you can rely on. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate uh, your time and we look forward to hearing more good news out of that Kabecha factory. Thank you very much. That is Aspen Pharmacare CEO Stephen Saar telling us that up to one and a half million Johnson & Johnson doses are due to fly out from their Eastern Cape factory and will be landing in Johannesburg.